You know, it is ironic that uh, Osama bin Laden lived long enough to witness his own worst nightmare in the Arab world. The people he tried to inspire, the people he told that they can only overthrow tyranny by violence and extremism, and he couldn't accomplish it in more than 10 years, really 20 years of operations. And those same people were out in the street demonstrating peacefully with no violence, even as they were being shot and killed by security forces, and chanting not extremist ideological religious slogans, but freedom, dignity, democracy, the same values that the United States stands for. Those of us who have been studying public opinion for a long time uh, always knew that uh, there is a silent majority in the Arab world that was far more uh, liberal, far less uh, ideological, far less prone to violence, far more peaceful. Um, so, but that was a silent majority, and we know silent majorities rarely ever have an impact on politics. So, so the real change isn't suddenly a shift in opinion. The real change is that suddenly that silent majority turned into a very noisy majority. And that's really the change. And, and obviously why that happened is a big story, and it has a lot to do with the information revolution that enabled it as an instrument of mobilization. But it isn't really a story about a shift of the mindset of the Arab public. And we have to understand that it's, it's been there all along. Those of us who've been arguing about Al-Qaeda, we knew that even those who embraced Al-Qaeda, by and large in the Arab world, embraced it as the enemy of my enemy at a time of anger with the U.S. far more that they embraced its agenda. And we have to keep in mind that before 9-11, uh, when you looked at uh, Afghanistan and you looked at the Taliban government in Afghanistan, it was the most unpopular government in the Arab world, perhaps after Israel. But certainly it's one, even governments who typically deal with everyone didn't have diplomatic relations with the Taliban government except for two of all the 22 Arab states. So this was not some a, an agenda that was embraced. And it, it happened at a context when 9-11 hit in, nine, in, 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 in 2001. It was happening in a context of a very intense Israeli-Palestinian confrontation, anger with the yes over that issue after the Palestinian Intifada that had started in the fall of 2000. And then obviously what followed um, in Afghanistan, but more, more importantly in Iraq. So the, that kind of anger was the that resulted in a backlash. It was not an embrace. It never was an embrace. Those who embraced Al-Qaeda for its agenda were always a minority. What's fascinating about the dynamics of the Arab public uprisings is that in the old days, arg arguments by governments that the government is there to protect them from anarchy to protect them from enemies, to protect them from sectarianism and divisions worked. And after the Iraq War, we know that their fear of the anarchy in Baghdad, uh, uh, you know, uh, made them rally behind their own governments in, 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 in Cairo and, and, and Amman, when, people, when governments said, would you rather have Cairo, would you rather have Baghdad? Uh, people said, I'll take Cairo every day of the week. Uh, so in, in, in that sense, it worked. But what's extraordinary is that these arguments are no longer working. The public is simply fed up. They see them more as arguments, not as reflective of something genuine. And say, so if Al-Qaeda or if, if other extremist groups are going to take over and try to be autocratic, we will deal with them the same way we're dealing with you. Uh, the most, uh, uh, the clearest example of this is in Libya where, uh, you know, Gaddafi went from saying this is an American or Zionist conspiracy to this is Al-Qaeda conspiracy, and the public isn't buying any of it. Not only the Libyan public isn't buying any of it, but extraordinarily, the Arab public outside of Libya isn't buying any of it. That's the fascinating story here, is that normally those conspiracy theories worked, uh, but they're not working.